Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Trace video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 23. It is now time for our 15th round of Moto2. It is time for the Mandalika Street Circuit. It is time for the Indonesian GP. So here we go then guys from pole position on quite the streak as of recent. I've just caught a glimpse of the LCR guy on the left hand side of the screen there. He looks terrible. But anyway, ignore that for now because we have only one goal and aspiration in today's video and that is to take the 25 points. Now, I will tell you, this one might be an easy one. In practice and in qualifying, I did one lap or two, and that was enough. The AI have major difficulty somewhere around this track. I don't know where exactly, but for me, even on the hardest difficulty, they're not putting up a fight. So this one could be a very easy one. Coincidentally, the race is reduced, because apparently the, only, the, the race here in Mandalika is only 20 laps long, so 50% is actually 10, but for some reason we have 9 laps, so maybe it's 100% is uh, 18 laps here in Mandalika circuit, which I'm surprised at because it's not a very long circuit. I just assume it's a case of that uh, the tyres are getting battered around this circuit, but I think we've just found out where the AI struggle, and it seems to be where we are quite strong, and that is the uh, first sector. So. I don't think we're going to have too much issue in this one, but I'm just going to go for it. I want to see what lap times we can produce here in Mandalika. Maybe I'll drop down to power something too soon. But honestly, I think this one's, this one's going to be a very easy race. And this is vital for our championship because we're getting closer and closer to the stage where those points really make a difference. And if we're finishing ahead of Pedro Acosta, don't forget. Actually, this is a big point now. The gap is seven points in the championship. As it stands, we will be coming away from this as the Moto2 World Championship leader. It could happen in today's video, where we get the championship lead for the second time this season. I'm ready for it. And honestly, the AI in these tracks like these have bailed me out too many times. Because not every race should be a cakewalk, and not every race has been a cakewalk, but there's been some Grand Prix in this calendar where we have just dominated and simply because the AI struggle so much the AI is still on 120% difficulty I haven't changed it since we started in Moto3 I did change it a bit because in some tracks they were just unbeatable you couldn't even compete with them but here in Moto2 every race has been in 120% difficulty and I think I can be very proud of our performance this season but in races like these, I don't take too much pride knowing that we're going to win by a country mile simply because the AI just struggle. <clears throat> and they have tremendously struggled. They are so far behind now and we're only on the second lap. It's going to be very similar to what it was like in uh, Assen just a couple of weeks ago. Now, of course, uh, Assen was their first of our victories. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, this would be our sixth. We won in Assen. Apologies, I will spoil the other videos now by mentioning which races we've won in. But uh, I won in Assen, Silverstone, the Red Bull Ring, and the Re uh, where else did we win? And we won uh, in Buda, and then the most recent one in the previous video, in Mategi. So right now we're on back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back wins again, if I'm not mistaken. I better check, but I do believe that's what we're on right now. So the run of form coming in in the latter stage of the season has been brilliant. Now, don't get me wrong. None of this would have been possible if we didn't have the assistance from um, well, the the uh, the team in the in the winter testing. What was it called? The summer break. If they hadn't have provided us the boost we needed, then I don't think we would have been in this situation right now. So I'm so glad we maintained a good relationship with Marcus Ramirez and continue to achieve the objectives because that has changed. And if you want to know what I'm referring to, if you check out my video I did recently, which is the MotoGP to, uh, 23 Moto2 career mode update, in that video I'll explain how we've improved the bike, how the bike is much quicker now. We still suffer with a lot of tyre wear, and we still suffer a lot of uh, fuel. The degrad uh, fuel consumption is just too high, tyre degradation is higher as well. So, yeah, it's been a night and day difference, and uh, I've just had a quick check. We did win in Buda, we won in Mategi, and this could be the third in a row. It could be six victories to our name. And if you cast your minds back before the Aston GP in round eight, yeah, it's night and day of the difference, and I'm so pleased because we're moving up to MotoGP next season. You guys voted, you guys chose what we're going to do, and we're moving up to MotoGP. And I wanted to move up 
as a Moto2 World Champion. And it looks like that will come to fruition in this series. So I'm really excited now. And getting that championship lead at the end of this one will be crucial for our aspirations. Well then, we could drop down to power setting too, but I, I'm noticing the fuel, although that noise is uh, kind of annoying how it keeps popping up. We're actually neck and neck with the fuel right now. We're actually losing enough. But we're also still keeping enough to stay in the green. That, that doesn't happen when we run Power Setting 3. So this could be quite the surprise in this video. This is a nice change. And as I say, uh, this is still a 50% race. Nothing has been changed at all. I, I, I finished the race just earlier on and I've jumped into this one straight away. But so far, so good. We're having a fantastic experience here. And winning here in Mandalika for my Indonesian fans is going to be absolutely terrific. So... This, this is going to be a feel-good video, and, and I feel great. I feel awesome with the Moto2 bikes. I'm really enjoying Moto, MotoGP. I'm just absolutely loving MotoGP 23. I, I think, even though Ride 5 has come out and I'm enjoying Ride 5 as well, I've not been touching Ride 5 as of late. I, st I think I, this is my favourite bike game this year. I just love MotoGP 23. I'm just having such a good time. And even with the live GP race as well, they're absolutely phenomenal. So, yeah great feeling for me right now. I'm, I'm feeling really positive. I'm going to Motorcycle Live next week, or maybe this week, depending on uh, when I upload this video. So, yeah, if I see you there, then definitely let's talk about some motorcycle games. But I'll be with Ride 5 with BMW, of course. A bit like last year, when I went to Motorcycle Live as well. But across the line, that is a 133.668. Immediately after the 133.667, just a moment ago. And before that, it was a 133.6. So the competition right now is looking favourable for us as it stands. Tony Arbolino is in second place. He's ten and a half. In fact, he's 11 seconds behind us. And this is the telltale part now. So he's 10.8 seconds. I think they're keeping the gap there. But what's it going to be like when we start turning into these corners here? I do believe it's here is where the AI just struggle. Yeah, the gap's changed again. It's up to 11.3 we can't be earning that much time in, a, in a one sector. That's crazy. But so far, so good. And there is the championship standings. I was looking forward to seeing this. And there it is. We will be leading the championship by the thinnest of margins, which is two points. I think when we last took over the lead, was that in the Red Bull ring? We It was a point or two again. So this has been a very interesting season. It's probably been the best season we've had in the past couple of years certainly kept me on my toes and I honestly wasn't sure if we were going to win it this year. Now I feel confident than ever. Next Grand Prix is in Phillip Island, a circuit that I love but I'm not particularly strong at so I'll have to see what I can produce. Of course I was very lucky there in a live GP a couple of weeks ago, just tried to stay consistent and thankfully I had the luck to help me win in that Grand Prix. But here we go then, let's bring on the power and across the line this will be a 133.9 so we have slipped off the pace ever so slightly but what is three tenths of a second when you're pulling away by seconds per lap on the AI not much to really concern ourselves at this stage but the medium front hard rear combination working like a dream but this has been a very strange one because even though the race is at 50% it feels like this race should be going on for longer but the calculation of only nine laps just makes it thing seem really easy so I probably am burning the same amount of fuel as I would for other races, but because the laps are so short here, and there's only nine laps, I think we could run power setting through the entire duration. And that, that's an instant win. If we could do that in many more races, we'd be looking at more victories. Whether it be the wet conditions or the dry. Possibly not the mixed conditions, that's where I'm not very strong. But uh, again, coming in, another strong lap time here. Only two tenths of a second is the deviation from the fastest lap, which was set on lap two. We're losing three tenths of a second going into sector three. But early on the brakes to go into the apex of turn 13. Bring on the power and really launch the uh, the forward bike to the right hand side. We are losing a bit of fuel. Maybe towards the latter stage I will reduce the power setting to just to be safe. But late on the brakes here we've gone a bit deep. Is that gaining time? I think, yeah, I think it did actually. Not, not a bad effort. So into the tight apex, uh, yeah, that is a track limit warning. I did cut the apex ever so slightly, but across the line, this is a 133.4. So the fastest lap of the Grand Prix coming in here on lap number six. Yet again, another strong one minute 33. 
we're on it. We're absolutely on it in this one. And so far, the status quo of the top eight is still the same. Tony Arbolino second. Pedro Costa, former championship leader at the end of this race. He's down in third. Albert Arenas as well. He could do me a favour, but I don't think he'll want to. Not against his Red Bull KTM IO teammate. Sam Lowe's in fifth. Chandra and Iagora, the two uh, Idemitsu uh, Honda Asia riders, are doing really well in sixth and seventh. But uh, concerning our championship battle with Somkat Chandra, I think he's going to be losing out on this one. And I think this might be our last exchange. I think from the next race, we'll have a new comp uh, competitor in our competition. But we'll see what the, uh, the team gives me. And there is Alonso Lopez down in eighth, number 21. And uh, yeah, this has been a very interesting season. And honestly, the the aspect of teams upgrading and changing things in the summer break has been a brilliant addition to MotoGP 23. It, it was absolutely brilliant. I really love the point where other teams are being upgraded as well. So we've seen the likes of the OnlyFans uh, American Racing Riders, Sean Dylan Kelly, Rory Skinner, they've been up there battling for the top tens. It's been great to see, and it's something we didn't really notice in the previous games, but across the line, it's another improvement. So 133.368, so good stuff coming in here in Indonesia. And I will confess, I know a lot of these tracks are very similar. You know, the newer, later tracks that are coming to MotoGP, the likes of um, the Termas de Rio Hondo. Here in Indonesia, the Chang International Circuit, there's a lot of tracks that are very similar. So it's been it's been rather interesting so far to see which, which track uh, really works for me and what doesn't. I wouldn't say the Chang International Circuit works for me. There's a few parts I really like. Circuit of Argentina I love. I love that track but it's still very similar to this one. Similar sort of conclusion to the end corners. And the Chang International Circuit has some very different lines as well but it all seems familiar if that makes sense. It may be just me, me but I just find a lot of these newer tracks really remind me of each other's tracks. So I think I could even put in their so call as well but uh, of course we didn't see that action in MotoGP in real life. But uh, so far, so good. Down by a tenth of a second. This could be another improvement, but I should probably drop to power setting too soon. So maybe let's get across this lap time to get a good lap. No, let's not bother. I've just seen the gap. But we're already losing time. Stay in power setting too. It doesn't really matter. But we're losing a lot of time after dropping down to power setting too. My goodness. Six tenths of a second we are behind. I hope we still stay in the 133s. It'd be a shame to ruin that streak. One into the final corner and coming out of the final corner. Across the line. Is it? Oh no, it's a 134. I shouldn't have dropped down to power setting two till now. <laughs> it is a 134, but this lap time will be a 134 as well, or probably worse now that we're on power setting two. But there is your championship standings, guys and gals. Tony Arbolino is falling behind here. But Pedro Acosta is going to yield the championship lead no more. We will... No, he's going to, he will be yielding it. <laughs> We're going to take over at the front. And we are going to be leading the Moto2 championship even after a disastrous start or at least what felt like it when we had some really tough races in the likes of Jerez, Le Mans, Mugello. This is a real good story. And uh, considering we were so close in the Saxon as well, so it's good to pull back some valuable points and... Uh, I don't think I really mention this very often, but I think I made a note early to start saying it in videos. So, guys and gals, if you are interested in spending more time with myself and getting involved with the rest of the Dot Race community, I would employ you to join the Dot Race Discord server. I don't do a very good job of promoting the Dot Race Academy, but you're more than welcome to join that and uh, just chat to us and many other bike fanatics and Dot Race fans in there as well. So, uh, yeah, I don't do a very good job of promoting that, but I'm going to try start to doing it now and uh, of course as well if you yet to subscribe now is a great time to do so because we are going to be finishing this race with the 25 ch point oh championship points it's beautiful i can't wait for this we're going to be in the championship lead yet again i'm going to try and wheelie here but i just can never seem to do it it, it just doesn't work there's no anti-wheelie or nothing but i guess it doesn't matter maybe i should have done a stoppy instead but hey we've won the race and we will take over in the championship lead so there's the result then, guys and gals. We did take the victory. 16 and a half seconds behind Tony Arbolino as we achieved the perfect weekend. Pedro Acosta down in third, but I'll tell you what, his teammate was close behind. Wow, that could have uh, pulled some points back for us. But here, look at the championship. 
There it is. Two points ahead of Pedro Acosta. But Tony Arbolino is only 18 behind. It feels like he's not really gained enough points recently, but he's still right there. One bad race from Acosta, one bad race from me, and he's the championship leader, so we have to be careful. And going into Australia could be wild, so I can't wait for that. Hopefully I'll have the video done for you very soon so you can see. But guys, that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching the video. I do hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and ciao for now. Oh, and of course, I'll leave you with the team's championship so you can have a look at that to conclude the video. Ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.